I read four books in the month of February. Let's go ahead and go through my ratings and reviews for each. If you're new around here, I keep all my notes in Notion and as I finish these books, I end up updating the notes on each book. So by the time I come to a recap for you guys, I can actually remember my thoughts when I finish the book because otherwise there's no way I would remember all the details and be able to tell you guys. So I'll be looking down at my phone and, and reading exactly what my thoughts were when I finished each one of these books. Now, if you saw my recap in January, you know that I was all about Tate James in January. I read two of her series. And so the first book that I read in February was finishing out the Hades series, which is the fourth book in the series called Timber. I gave this book four stars, but the series overall would definitely be a five star series. I said, love this series, but this book in particular was a girthy bitch because it was. It took the longest to get through out of all of the books. I felt a little like this book lagged a little, which the others didn't, but I really fucking enjoyed the ending. Poetic perfection, it couldn't have been more perfect of an ending to this story, and I totally agree with that. This book in particular has one of the best endings wrapping up this entire story and this entire series. This entire series follows one specific story, and it's a reverse harem. I'm talking about one girl, three men. What's a little different about this reverse harem is that these three men weren't friends to begin with, and most of the time when you read books with reverse harems, they're already friends, they're already connected, and so it's like really brotherly. But in this, they actually all didn't really like each other. They were jealous of each other, and you see it all throughout the book. It adds great banter. I love the jealousy. I love the scenes that played out when they had to learn like how to share her throughout the book. But this is definitely like a strong, badass main female character who happens to be the leader of like the baddest gang out of all of this entire city. She is a fucking psychotic ex-fiance who is trying to kidnap her, who does horrible things for her. Definitely check your trigger warnings. Honestly, in any of the books that I ever recommend or I ever talk about, it is your responsibility to make sure that they are not something that is triggering for you. So I always, always recommend checking your trigger warnings because I have none, okay? I will read the craziest, dirtiest, grimiest shit there is on the planet. If it's in a book and it keeps my interest, I'm gonna keep reading it. So just keep that in mind whenever I'm giving you recommendations, it is in your best interest to make sure that you're checking those trigger warnings before you dive into any of these books. This one in particular has some definite fucking crazy shit that goes down in it, so again, Check your shit before you read your shit. The first three books in this series, I devoured. I'm talking like read them all in like 24 hours to 48 hours time. I got to this last one, like I said, I was a girthy bitch. She's a big one. I think she's the biggest one out of the entire series. And there was a lot that happens in this book to wrap everything up, but it was totally necessary. But the way that it ended, I was getting towards the end of the book and I was like, oh my God, I swear to God, if they just let it end like this and they just put this character in this position and after everything that he's done, knowing who the main female character is, I'm gonna be pissed. Don't worry. Don't worry. Tay James comes in and the bitch saves the day because the way that she ends this is Perfection, okay, let me just say she gets her revenge. Okay, that's all that's that's all I'll say and it is delicious revenge. I think I'm in my like series era this year when it comes to reading standalones versus reading series. I'm really starting to dive deep into series and when I start something, if I'm booked, I have to finish that series before I go on to something else. Now if the series doesn't really grab my attention and like keep me hooked, keep me lost in the moment in these books, I can go on to other books and then come back to it. But for the most part, like my ADHD fixates on this book, on these characters in this world and I have to finish it. I have to know what happens. And so I started a new series Series the month of February and it is with an author that I've never read before but instantly has become an autobi author. I can tell you that right now moving on moving forward I will probably read every single one of her books because her writing is intoxicating it's addicting I absolutely love the way that she writes the romance in her books is The Stopover by Miss T.L. Swan this is absolute perfection I gave this five stars let's dive into some of my notes on this one I said wow I read this book in 24 hours I laughed I cried I got fucking excited at the sexual tension and the smut this book was exactly what I needed and got me out of my week-long reading hang over. This was a stranger, one night stand, taboo boss relationship, age gap, two fiery characters that have the best fucking chemistry on the page I've seen in a long time. Read this shit now. I mean, if that doesn't get you hooked already from just the, my little reaction, I don't know what will. And then we come to the best thing that I've read in a long time. By far my favorite book in the series, I can already tell you this is perfection. This book right here. Ah! I have no words. I have no words. I'm sure I have some in my notes and we'll get to them in a second. But The Takeover by T.L. Swan, this is the second book in that series. When I tell you I laughed, I cried, 
I fell in love with this storyline, with these characters, with this brother in this book, with the main female character who is like a sassy, badass bitch. I love strong female characters, okay? And I love it when they give it back to them just as much as they give it to them. We're not looking at weakness here, okay? We're not looking at a, a, a damsel in distress here. We're looking at a badass bitch who's handling her shit, who falls in love with a fine ass man that she probably shouldn't have. Let's go to my notes. I said, read in 24 hours and oh my fucking God, I love this man. Book boyfriend for life. Enemies to lovers. She's a widow with three kids. He's a rich, hot, sexy multimillionaire that speaks five languages and he loves to give oral to please his women. Okay. <laughs> Do you hear that? I laughed so hard I was crying and couldn't see during the first stay over at her house. One of my favorite books ever. This is a semi baby spoiler of this book, okay? There's a scene in here where they were on a work trip. They weren't, they didn't know that they were both gonna be on this work trip. She comes home and realizes because there was a situation that happened on the work trip, his underwear ended up in her suitcase, okay? She has three kids three boys. Her oldest is like basically grown. He's like 17, 18 years old. He finds this dude's underwear in her suitcase at the exact same time that he decides to show up unannounced at her house. And when I tell you I cried so hard at this scene because I was laughing so hard at the shit that was going on, you have to read it. Have to read it. The banter, 10 out of 10. Sexual tension, the smut, all of it. It was Fantastic. Then we come to the third book in this series, The Casanova by T.L. Swan. This one was great too. This one was great in a very different way. I gave this one four stars, but the plot twist in this had me reeling. Let's get into the notes because I know I wrote a lot on this one. Man, the plot twist in this sent me. Elliot irritated the fuck out of me at times, especially when he was a dick, which he was. But honestly, he was written that way and he was written very fucking well. But I really enjoyed Kate putting him in his place. I love to see a strong woman stand up for herself and tell a man he's an idiot. So far, this was my least fave out of the series, but I still have one book to go, but I still really enjoyed it. So keep it in mind, it's still a phenomenal book. It was just that the other ones like knocked it out of the park. This was a taboo relationship. She has worked for him for seven years and he's never noticed her. He's a CEO dick that is an undercover romantic. The duck scene, the duck scene you guys, was really funny and overall I really enjoyed this book. It does talk a lot about grief from losing parents, so just FYI if that's a trigger, but overall it was still a fantastic read. Now if you were here for January's video, you'll know that I showed you a TBR that did not even end up on the list this month and that's because I am what's it called like an emotional reader it really depends on what mood I'm in what I'm interested in what's holding my intrigue at the moment as to what I'm gonna actually read and nothing on that list hooked me after I read that first book in the TL Swan series so by keeping that in mind let's go ahead and go into March's TBR now I'm feeling really ballsy for March okay the amount of books that I have in my lap right here is probably not realistic. You never got anywhere in life by being realistic, okay? First book on the list is the last book in the TL Swan series, which is The Do-Over. I'm gonna read through this puppy and finish up that series this month. This next book was actually a book that I got during Galentine's in February. We did like a book with a date type of thing where it was like wrapped up and then we chose books on a table. We had no idea what they were at our book club. And so I ended up getting Her Soul to Take. I've heard great things about this book, so I'm really excited to read this one. A little excerpt of it says, a college student has unleashed an irresistible darkness, a soul-hungry demon who might be her only chance at survival in the dark romance series by TikTok sensation Harley LaRoe. Okay, we love a little demon relationship. Speaking of fantasy, then we'll dive into How Does It Feel by Janine O'Reilly. I'm actually gonna meet her next month. I'm very excited for this. And the little excerpt on top of this one says, a forbidden obsession, unyielding family allegiance, three deadly challenges. Mm. I love a challenge situation. Ooh, let's get into it. Something I've tried to do really hard this year is actually try out new authors and new books, whether that's traditionally published, indie published, I don't care. I just want it to be in the realm of the books that I like to read, but trying out new authors. And so all of these books this month as well, besides T.L. Swan from the previous month, I have never read any of these authors either. So it's like really fun to dabble into all of these different types of books. Next up, we have The King of Wrath by Anna Huang. I believe she's gonna be at the event that I'm going to in April as well, so I'd really like to get through some of the authors that I'm gonna end up meeting there. I've heard that this is a great book too. She was my North Star, the brightest jewel in the sky, is what the top of this one says. I heard that there's a guy in this named Dante who's a fucking fantastic book boyfriend, so I'll report back. Then we have Miss Allie Hazelwood, Love Theoretically. I normally use books like these that are like fluffy romances, like Tessa Bailey type books, as like palette cleansers. I love the books. I love the happy endings. I love the predictability. 
especially when I'm wrapped up in something like heavy world building, like fantasy or romanticy. I love coming to these books for like an in-between book in between those to take a fucking break. This one says rival physicists collide in a vortex of academic feuds and fake dating shenanigans in this delightfully steminist rom-com from the New York Times bestselling author of The Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain. This next one is a series, so I'm saving it for the last. I will not pick up this book unless I finish all of those books because you know I already told you if it's a series that I get hooked in then I can't think of anything else until I finish that series and this is the Broken Bonds series. I think this is called the Bonds That Tie series by Jay Bree. I've heard great things about this book. I think there's like five or eight books in this entire series. So I put this on my if I get to it in this pile for this month. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like this video. Let me know down below what's the number one book that you want to read this month. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, besties.